Hello dear Universe Unbox 2 fans and welcome to What The Math. Today we're going to be briefly talking about the new features of the Alpha 17 release of Universe Unbox 2, which is actually one of the biggest uh, releases since uh, since the beginning of the game. It's, there's a lot of really cool new additions and a lot of things that have been changed in the way um, the game calculates certain uh, th certain things about planets and stars. So let's start with the, actually the first cool addition and that's of course the way the stars behave now. So first of all the glow has has been changed and you can kind of see the glow actually looks a little bit different and it is more realistic now so if i were to open one of the new simulations called flare grid you'd see that uh, a lot of stars actually have a lot more shininess to them they actually look a little bit more realistic and a little bit more painful to look at so if you were to zoom in it would really look bright uh so this is one of the new additions and the other main addition to the stars is that uh, the developers uh, changed the way that um, the type of a star is calculated. Specifically, if I were to go into right here, all star types grid, you would see that uh, there's actually a lot more types of stars now. It used to be only five major types, now there's like 16. And the way stars evolve has changed as well. So if I were to go into this area, and take a look at these smaller stars, which are basically um, white dwarfs and some of these are probably neutron stars, or maybe they're not. No, I think these are all white dwarfs. They're really, really tiny and they don't really have much shine to them. And here we go. So you can see the stars behave a lot better and look more realistic as well. So there's a lot of flaring going on on the surface and a lot of really cool effects. And those uh, shinier ones are even more dramatic and they're even better looking. So here, if I zoom in on, uh, what I think is um, an orange main sequence star. Um, okay, this is so hard to see because the other stars are actually kind of covering the the shininess. But you can kind of see how how bright they became and how much better they look. And so these some of the larger stars, some of the white super giants, they're they're just amazingly looking. So if I were to just go into the new simulation and place one of the super giants, so this is Rigel. The white super giant you, you'd see uh, it looks really cool now it has uh, several types of glow there's a glow on the outside there's a glow on the inside and they do look amazing and um the other thing they changed is so the way the stars evolve so there's uh they go through different stages of evolution so we're gonna take a look at some of these uh if there's an actual i think there's an evolution of a star test there we go so look at how they evolve now so a lot more dramatic a lot more realistic and you'd see you'll see it go through different stages though it's going to change color it's going to change uh size obviously and right about now we're going to experience a very super white uh super giant and there we go there was a supernova and now it's it became a remnant uh i i believe this is actually uh a neutron star which it should be but nevertheless we can uh, th there's a new addition right here a new button that has been added for white dwarfs and neutron stars you can go under materials and on the bottom here, there's a button called Make Pulsar. So what used to be relatively difficult to do is now just a button. You press it and ta-da, haha, we have a pulsar. Let's just slow down. And there we go. So this is an active pulsar that you can now play around with. And the pulsar effects are pretty awesome as well. I think they've changed them a little bit. And we can see the effects of a pulsar if we add a bit of a... A bit of an angular motion here. Let's just give it about 20 degree motion. Okay, that is a little bit too much. Uh... Too much there we go excellent so here we now have a pulsar so if we were to look right into its eye there we go you can see it pulsing uh, every few seconds and basically this is a pretty cool improvement because pulsars are really awesome and many people have been asking you know how do you make it so that it always occurs because it didn't always happen and now it will always happen as soon as you press the button and so once again this is under material tab and here on the bottom where there is a button called make pulsar Another really cool addition is, of course, to do with planets. And here, I'm going to just add a random um, rocky planet just to show you what they actually did. So let's zoom into this planet, which is called Eustibi, or Eust used to be. Used to be? That's kind of cool. Uh, so we're going to zoom into this planet and just take a look at it. And so this is what the surface of this terrestrial planet looks like. Uh, this is a rocky planet. It has no water, nothing. Uh, if you go under materials and you scroll down, you'll notice there's two new things, two new features. One is called Earth Similarity and one is called Life Likelihood. Now, this is a, a pretty complicated way they, they calculate these, but basically this is based on real um, astronomical theories where there's a, something called Earth Similarity Index and something called Life Likelihood Index. These are both... Um, 
actual measurements that we use today to calculate how similar a planet might be to Earth and how likely there might be life. Now, so this one is not very similar. It's only about 74% similar. And we can change that by, you know, doing things like, okay, let's uh, maybe, first of all, move it a little bit farther away from the star. This will decrease its temperature. We're also going to add a, a little bit of uh, atmospheric pressure and give it atmosphere and obviously give it some water as well. And now this is actually a mostly iron planet, so we're going to change this to iron and silicates and give it water. Here are some clouds and here comes water. All right, awesome. So this is a water world now. Maybe give it some organics as well. And now if we look at the index again, you'll see that it is now 85% similar to Earth and has a likelihood of life of 17.3%, which is pretty awesome. So this is this is a really cool feature that I've added. There's still no way to actually get life. Uh, so this will not give it life on the surface. And this is an update they're actually working on, uh, kind of an exciting future update that will introduce life later on where we'll actually have, uh, you know, green p pastures appearing slowly and so on and so forth. But as of now, the, the green pastures will obviously not appear yet, but this is a future planned uh, update. So this is a pretty cool uh, addition, I think. It does give you a bit of a, uh, a bit more opportunities to explore, uh, you know, what's what's still the likelihood of having a life on certain planets. You can maybe recreate um, certain solar systems in our region and then try to place planets until this becomes a certain percentage and this will give it a chance to have life. And there's a lot of things that are taken into consideration here, including things like um, eccentricity of the orbit, uh, the atmospheric pressure, and amount of liquid water on the surface. Also, another update here is that they have reworked the way surfaces are calculated and look. So if you actually, it's, it looks better if we, if we add Earth here. I'm going to place Earth as well. And so here's Earth, and if you look closely, you'll notice that uh, even the way surface is calculated and looks now is a little bit different. So here, um, if you start adding more water, there is now um, a lot more features on the surface that will give it uh, things like ridges, uh, mountains, and uh, so it's it's really more more of a three-dimensional surface now than a two-dimensional that it used to be. So you can kind of see that whatever is uh, a mountain or a higher ridge will obviously not be covered in water right away. And so there's a lot more really awesome uh, three-dimensional features on uh, surfaces of planets now. And this is obviously uh, the Himalayas where Mount Everest is. So this is why this will be the last part disappearing underwater. Here we go. So I think it's a pretty cool addition, especially if you want to investigate things like uh, global warming or something where uh, levels of oceans might increase. So you can actually do this really slowly by melting the caps and seeing how much water will increase. And this will be calculated relatively accurately because of the way that surfaces are placed on planets now. And a few other minor additions are things like, so if you go into rings here, there's a new um, ring preset that has been added called Moon Sphere. And this is what this does. It basically generates a bunch of moons in a sphere around your object. And then they obviously start flying around, orbiting around. And most likely will, oh, this is really cool. Most likely will approach your object and do a little bit of destructioning. Here we go. And yep, that's what happens. Uh, so this is just, just moons in, in a spherical orbit around something. Uh, obviously, you can change moons to something else. I think you can. I think there's a way to change. Yeah, you can change uh, to particles. You can turn this into um, a lesser number of bodies. So here I could actually turn this into uh, 500 little particles that will do the same thing. Let's just do that here. And there they are. So there's spherical particles flying around. And this is uh, cool because you can play around with this, generating things like Dyson Sphere, for example, by possibly generating just a bunch of particles in, a, in an orbit around a certain object. All right, so that's Moon Sphere, and then we have a few more things, specifically simulations that have been added. One of them is called, and it's all under historical here, so one of them is called um, Halloween Asteroid Passes Earth in 2015, and this is something I've talked about in one of my videos. Basically, there it is. There's that big pumpkin flying through uh, our uh, close to our solar system. 
the reason why it's cool is like i mentioned it's actually if you look at this asteroid it's um it's actual orbital plane is very very interesting it's uh, it's a lot more misaligned compared to the rest of the planets and asteroids so that's why we didn't really see it coming from from the bottom uh because we don't really look for asteroids in that direction but this also reminded us that they can come from anywhere so now um, astronomers will start looking not just uh, in, in this plane, but they'll also start looking uh, there and over there as well for possible asteroid approaches. And so you can obviously explore this asteroid and the simulation by uh, clicking on historical and it's right here. We also have uh, Halley's Comet approach in 1986 and this is the comet coming toward us. So you can explore that as well because it will show you how it basically approached and this is the comet that you could actually see in the sky really, really, really well. Many people have pictures of this com comet from the 86. Uh, I think I was pretty young back then. I don't really remember seeing anything, but that's because I wasn't really paying attention to the stars at my age. But you can see that the comet is actually, it forms a tail right about here. So there you go. This kind of gives you an idea of how comets work and also uh, kind of gives you an idea why Halley's Comet is such a recurring um, object in, in all kinds of historical accounts. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it appeared everywhere from the Bible to like uh, medieval writings. So uh, we see it every once in a while and it always reminds us of something. There's another minor simulation that has been added here that I actually didn't even know about. It's called Sighting Springs Comet Encounter with Mars. So a very similar thing happened to Mars where it actually had a comet pass very, very close to it. And it's right here. It's called Sighting Spring. And it's going to pass or has already passed actually uh, in 2014. Oh, too fast. Uh, really close to Mars. So if we were, were on Mars at that point, we could have seen it. But we weren't close enough. And so this is the comet that's uh, currently kind of on the way out to the outer solar system, but will one day come back and you can explore this to find out when is the next time we're going to see it and where is it going to be when you get to see it in the sky again. All right, so this is Sighting Spring that passed by Mars in 2014. And finally, we have this other simulation called Triple Eclipse of Jupiter in, in 2015. And this is, I believe this was captured by um, Hubble Telescope, although possibly Horizon Probe as well, because this says Horizon. And this is when, uh, see, see here, I'll show, you, I'll show you what happened. This is when uh, three of Jupiter's moons passed in front of it, casting a shadow. And this is why we call it a triple eclipse. So there you go. Uh, three shadows uh, in front of Jupiter. And uh, this is a pretty rare event and we will manage to take a really good picture of it. So here's actually the picture or you see it on the screen right now. And so you can kind of explore this. Uh, this is really it that this simulation has. There's nothing else here just to kind of show you what happened and how it occurred. And so obviously these are more of the minor additions. I think the major additions are the, the way that uh, both stars and planets now look and are uh, and the way that their surfaces and their insides are calculated. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about where this game is headed. Can't wait for this new update that will allow us to change certain planets into more Earth-like planets and then basically cause life on them. So I'm going to have lots of new videos coming when that happens because we're going to try to create life on every single planet in our solar system. And this actually, I should have showed you Mars. Look at how you can kind of see the ridges of Mars so much better. And look, this is the Olympus Mons, the uh, biggest mountain slash, sorry, not the biggest mountain, the biggest volcano in our solar system. And you can see it on the surface. It actually is it actually appear, appears as an actual mountain, which is pretty cool. This uh, didn't really look as cool before, but now the surfaces are just really, really amazing. And if we look at the way Mars is right now, it's uh, only about 69% Earth-like and life likelihood is zero. So, so I think once the developers come up with the new update that uh, introduces life as well, we're going to definitely re-terraform everything and create life everywhere in our solar system. But look at how beautiful Mars is now. This is so gorgeous, so much better than it was before. Anyway, so that's basically the summary of updates for Alpha 17. I'm super excited about where this game is headed and hopefully you are too. Thank you guys so much for watching and game you later. Bye bye. And let's actually launch an asteroid at Olympus Mons and see what happens. And another boom. And another boom. And look at that. I actually destroyed it. It's gone. There's no more uh, mountain or anything here. There's just a big meteorite impact. It's just a bulge now. You can actually have a lake in there. That is so cool. That's what you get for three-dimensional planets.